for our keynote today, please welcome BuzzFeed's Jonah Preddy. Hello, how's everyone doing? So, um, let's see if my clicker works. No, no, no. Clicker doesn't seem to work. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about money today. Um, here we go, here we go. I'm gonna talk about people being crazy. And when I say people are crazy, I mean that people are literally crazy. Um, but I'm using this new definition of literally. Um, a lot of you might not have heard, but literally now actually means figuratively. So people used to use the word literally to mean figuratively, and now it's actually in both the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and the Oxford English Dictionary. Um, so just, we, if we all work together, we can change language, it's kind of inspiring. Um, so uh, um, I think that um, one of the things, so, so everyone's crazy, so one of the things that um, you, I've noticed sort of working on the web for, for many years now is that we like to think of ourselves as having these unified rational selves with consistent interests. Um, we like to think that we're always interested in the same um, types of things and behave the same way. But it turns out, like, if you're hanging out with your friends from college, you behave very differently than when you're hanging out with your in-laws. You behave very differently when you're um, using a service like Google than when you're using a service like Facebook. Um, and we can really test on the web uh, that, um, and see things more clearly than we've ever been able to see before. So Google versus Facebook, the two biggest sites moving people around the internet. Most of you here use both of them and yet you behave very differently and you're interested in very different things when you're on Google than when you're on Facebook. I think Google's pretty well understood. It connects people with information they want. It's kind of solitary. You type something in a search box, you get a result back, and, um, and it tells you information you want. So in the early days of Google, a site called about.com realized that there wasn't a media site for the Google age. People would type, how do I get rid of my slice in golf? And there wasn't a good result. There was just golf magazines that had long stories. So they just made this page. Here's how you get rid of your slice in golf and directed people there. Um, or how to stop oily skin. This is the kind of thing people type into search box. Um, I see that uh, a few of you have oily skin in the audience. I'll, can you read it? I'll, I'll just wait one second to give you a chance to read it. All right. Um, um, and when you look at, so BuzzFeed, um, BuzzFeed has a network of over 300 million other sites. BuzzFeed is a big uh, social publishing site that um, reaches over 50 million unique visitors a month. Um, and we also have this lar much larger network of 300 uh, plus million UVs. And we can track um, what are the most viral stories. And when you look at the most popular stuff on Google, you see these things like nude pictures of Prince Harry or nip, nip slips or celebrity gossip or guilty pleasures. Um, and yet when you look uh, and when you look at like Google searches, this is a searches for sex and searches for Jesus. Um, sex is a lot more popular than Jesus on Google. Um, or uh, diet pills and the Arab Spring, two really important things. Um, the Arab Spring had a chance to, to pass diet pills, didn't quite make it. Um, and you, could, you, you, know, you can see that people are typing for things that you might be interested in when no one's looking. C celebrity gossip, nudes, nude, nude pictures, sex, diet pills, you're not gonna post those things on Facebook and say, hey, I'm looking for some diet pills, uh, or I'd love to see some, some nude pictures of uh, Prince Harry, Does anyone, can anyone send them to me? Um, that's not really what you're gonna post on, on Facebook, but it turns out that's what people search for on Google. Um, when you look at Facebook, yeah, um, it, you know, people are still a little confused about how Facebook works and why content spreads on Facebook. People are trying to communicate with their friends and connect with their friends on Facebook. So uh, this is a picture of two basset hounds running. Um, this was not what Larry and Sergey had in mind when they created Google to organize the world's information. This is not important information. However, it matters and spreads on Facebook because they are both LOL and cute. You can see over, over almost 1.2 million views on, their, on the BuzzFeed post to this. Why, why is LOL and cute so important? If you think about it, when you hang out with your friends and you all go out to dinner, everyone tells jokes. Um, the next day, everyone laughs, everyone tells jokes. The next day, you don't remember the specific jokes. What you remember is that you were with your friends and you laugh together and you feel closer to your friends. When you go home for the holidays and the family dog runs up, everyone pets the dog, you feel closer to the dog, but you also feel closer to 
to the other people in your family. And in fact, for most families, the moment when everyone's petting the dog is the highlight of the family weekend, and it's just all downhill after that. So there's an important purpose for sharing things like cute animals uh, and, and funny content on, on the web, and it's a way of connecting with other people in your life. Um, so here's some of the things that were popular from the BuzzFeed network on, on Facebook. Things like um, um, a school basketball player passes the ball to a mentally challenged player on the other team so he can score a basket, or a liberal saying why he's not voting for Obama, um, or, or, or things that are really tied to identity that have an emotional core to them. Um, and so, so really what we see on the internet is the same person is looking at these two stories. They're looking at, at picture, nude pictures of Rihanna or Prince Harry, and then in another tab in their browser, they're sharing on Facebook a story, an inspiring story about a high school basketball uh, uh, pl player who's mentally disabled scoring a point. And so we are, conf we are weird. Humans are weird. We have, we, we're interested in things that, that conflict. And we have to accept that and embrace that if we want to understand how to make great services for the web and how to make great content for the web. Um, the other thing is that EQ matters more than IQ. We all get focused on being smart. Being smart matters much less on the social web than having a heart and having a, a sense of human behavior and human psychology. Um, so this is a story on BuzzFeed that, that had millions of views about a couple. One who, uh, a husband was injured in Iraq. His wife nurses him back to health. It was an inspiring but also uh, tragic and, and um, um, heartwarming story. Um, they, they, um, and it had no text in it. It was purely something that, that connected with people's heart. Um, Another post, we, this is, if, if any of you here are, are left-handed, you'll recognize what this is, but um, left-handed people have to write over their own ink, or they have to do the claw writing to try to avoid their, the ink. And um, only 10% of people are left-handed, but tons of people shared this on BuzzFeed. Why did they share this? Um, they shared it because when you share something about your identity, you're expressing who you are. Um, we don't, we're moving past an era where some network executive says this is going to be popular and I'm going to take this, this piece of content and put it on prime time and lots of people will see it. And nobody has to really like it. 80% of have to, people have to think it's sort of okay. We're moving more into a world where 10, if 10% 10 of people love it, they'll share it, they'll pass it around, they'll move it across the web, and that actually will end up reaching more people than the sort of mediocre content that, that, that uh, you sort of um, have seen in the broadcast era. Um, about a year and a half ago, we had an earthquake in New York City. We we're not used to earthquakes here. Um, people were f f like emptying out of buildings. I was on Broadway and people were like running around like thinking that, that Armageddon was coming. Um, and it turned out there was absolutely no damage. Um, and an hour later, we posted a, a, um, a, a post on BuzzFeed of the horrific damage from the East Coast earthquake. This is one of the pictures here. Um, and by publishing into the zeitgeist, there's moments where all these other things people are interested in, in some personalized news service, they're going to be interested in, you know, in this topic and that topic. But when a huge earthquake hits, everyone's interested in the same thing for a short period of time. And, uh, and if you can publish into the zeitgeist to make content for that exact moment, you're, gonna, you're going to be in great shape. Cute animals deserve respect. It's cute dogs, cute cats are not just about cute dogs and cute cats. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Um, humor is inherently social. This printer is now called Bob Marley because it's always jamming. Um, this is something that, uh, that is perfect for what I like to call the board at work network, the millions of board office workers who are sharing content. Um, um, they're working half the day, they're sharing content the rest of the day, and this is the kind of content that connects people with each other in the office. Um, so are human rights. Um, when you see injustice in a social environment, when you're on Facebook, when you're on Twitter, and you see people who don't have the same rights as other people, you stand up for them because you're in a pro-social mode. Um, whereas when you see nude pictures of Scarlett Johansson or, or, um, or nude pictures of Rihanna, you don't really see people say, hey, I heard there was nude pictures of Scarlett Johansson. You don't really see people say that on Facebook, hey, I heard there's nude pictures of Scarlett Johansson. I got some time this weekend. Could someone send them to me? Because if you do that, you seem like a sleazy guy. And yet, when you look at Google search queries, people are searching for that because no one's looking at what they search. So when you think about social, and particularly people who work in marketing, they'll sometimes put like girls in bikinis in their marketing because they're nervous that it's not going to work. And it actually makes it worse because then you can't share it because you, it, it makes it, sharing it turn into something that's sort of sleazy that you, that you, that it makes you look like a, like a creepy person. Um, the, other, the other kind of key thing is that we tend to think of ourselves as sane and other people as crazy. You know, like, you, you, you hear friends will be like, oh, God, he's crazy, she's crazy. Actually, that person is also crazy. So it's, it's definitely false that you're not crazy. 
We're all a little bit crazy. Um, we're all a little OCD, for example. Some of you um, who've taken psychology classes will know what the DSM is. It's a, a big encyclopedia of mental disorders. Um, and you can look at some of the, um, of the um, descriptions of, of what is an OCD. Um, is preoccupied with details, rules, lists, orders, organization. Shows perfectionism that interferes with task completion. Is excessively do devoted to work and productivity at the exclusion of leisure activities. Is over conscientious, scrupulous, and inflexible about matters of morality. And for every kind of mental disorder, there's content on the internet that, that will really, really resonate with those people. You know, if you're OCD, this picture is really gonna get to you. Um, so is this one. I can see some of you in the audience are probably, uh, you can leave now or hide your eyes if, you, if, if these kind of pictures bother you. This has happened, right? Come on. Um, <laughs> um, why do they make the Pringles can, like, just slightly smaller than your hand? Um, um, or this, like, who, who does this? Seriously. It's like a maniac. Um, <laughs> I mean, that sometimes isn't your fault, but... Uh, um, or, or Tetris is a great game premised entirely on people's OCD part of their brain. Um, you know, are you coming to bed? I can't, it, this, it's important, there's someone wrong on the internet. Um, we've all been there. <laughs> um, histrionic personality disorder, another great personality disorder for, uh, to inspire internet content. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's uncomfortable in situations where he or she is not the center of attention. Interaction with others is often characterized by inappropriate sexually seductive or provocative behavior displays rapidly shifting or shallow expressions of emotion. This is basically a, like 50% like of social media. Um, you know, you can see uh, uh, this, this, uh, this sort of selfie is a kind of good example of that, getting grandma to help out. This guy is man crush Monday is me. <laughs> hashtag me's, hashtag selfie, hashtag sexy, hashtag follow me, hashtag hotshot, hashtag country life. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Um, here's some, uh, some rich kids of Instagram uh, showing off their private jets and their, uh, and their cars. Um, so, you know, if you can make a web service that, like, gives these people a great outlet, uh, people who have sort of narcissistic and histrionic personality disorder, you can grow a lot of traffic. Narcissistic personality disorder as well. Um, similar to histrionic personality, but also includes a more grandiose self of sense important, self of sense of, of self importance, is preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success. Um, you know, you can see, uh, there's some couples that, ha that were both have this, you know, um, but, you know, can kind of drive you to success on the social web if you have a, a little bit of some of these, uh, these, these disorders. ADHD, a lot of us here have ADHD. Some of you have already tuned out of this talk, I've noticed. Um, but, um, you know, ADHD is, is uh, you know, fails to give close attention to details, often has dis difficulty sustaining attention. Um, we see at BuzzFeed, you know, we, we did a, um, a BuzzFeed bruise talk with Senator Mark Rubio, and you can look at the video watch time. If anyone's watching this video at some point in the future um, on TechCrunch, um, you probably aren't watching right now because um, you've watched a little bit of the beginning and you've kind of fallen off, right? So you can see this huge watch time drop off. Um, we do long form content on BuzzFeed. We publish a lot of great long form. We did a, one, a great one on the Jeopardy, on the Jeopardy uh, champion, um, uh, uh, Keith Jennings, is that his name? Or Ken Jennings. And um, you can see how many people started, you know, over 100,000, and then you get down to like 15,000. It's not so bad. I mean, you think, you know, this many people click a story. Like when we have a long storm story or video, this many people click. But really, we're only getting that many people to actually watch, which means you can see, like, the, the ADD portion of society is, like, the difference between a football stadium and a basketball stadium. Um, there's some disorders that are not um, as serious, like, um, well, this one's actually kind of serious. Um, um, oppositional defiant disorder. That's um, great for people who read 4chan. Um, but this one's not so serious, like uh, caffeine, caffeine in, in, intoxication. Um, a lot of people have that restlessness, nervousness, excitement, insomnia, flushed face. Um, you know, BuzzFeed breaking news is great for you uh, if, you're, if you have this disorder, uh, or our politics section. We find that people who are drinking a lot of caffeine love this part of our site. Um, uh, cannabis intoxication. Um, this, one, this one is great. Fortunately, for, for people who are, have cannabis intoxication, there is, is reggae music which is great if you, it, I don't know, some of you, if, if you haven't tried it, um, reggae music is, is great if you have that particular issue. Um, also, uh, content like this. So, can everyone see that? Um, how, can you see this? How many, how many people see this image moving? 
Show of hands, show of moving. So this is cool about this image is that if you're high, it looks like it moves. <laughs> but it's, it's just a still image. So, so you can see from that show of hands that like TechCrunch audience is about like 50%, 50% uh, like smoking up before, before the, the talks. Um, so, um, so, you know, this might be worrying to some people. I mean, I, I think that um, it's comforting to think that we're, we're these unified, predictable people. But when you actually look at people behaving very differently on Facebook than on Twitter, people liking different things depending on the context, people having um, aspects of various personality disorders contained within themselves, when you look at that, um, it's sometimes it's a little unsettling, but I think that you should actually be happy that, um, that you have this conflicted nature. Um, it's actually a good thing, not a bad thing. At BuzzFeed, it's part of our strategy. We embrace that and make content for, for, for sort of the whole person, for all the different quirky, different types of things that people are interested in. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, I think being human is, be, is means being a little, a little insane. And so fortunately, for, the internet has a good way to test whether you're human. It's called the Voigtkamp test. Some of you may know it from the movie Blade Runner. Um, right now, this test is being administered to see if the gentleman on the left is a replicant or a human. It's hard to tell just by looking at someone. Um, but if you ask people the right questions, you can tell. And one of the most important kind of questions to ask people is about their empathy towards animals. P if people have uh, uh, replicants and androids, don't have much um, empathy towards animals. So I'm going to administer the test right now, look at the screen, and just focus on what emotions you're feeling as you look at these pictures. Are you ready? Yes? All right. Here we go. This little guy here, this is like a baby cat kissing his mama. Oh, a little ice cream for the pooch. <laughs> um, just giving a little hug there. This is a baby giraffe. Oh, just kissing here. <laughs> little teacup pig. <laughs> Nap time here. <laughs> All right, now how are you feeling? Did people feeling, did anyone feel emotion? Did anyone feel any emotion? No? A little bit? Some? Okay, okay. So, so if you did feel emotion, that means you're, you're probably human. Um, congrats. Um, but if not, there are two possibilities. And this is actually, when people complain to me about too many cute animals on BuzzFeed, they're like, how can you have those cute animals? You do the serious reporting and long form stuff, but you also have these cute animals. Why, you know, doesn't that, you know, um, like, how can you have that on the site? I always ask them, you know, are you a sociopath or an android? Because basically, those are the only two options for people who aren't, who don't, who aren't able to show empathy for animals and feel no emotion. So if you didn't feel emotion in that last test, um, it's possible that you are like a Jeffrey Dahmer type serial killer, because they all torture animals as kids, can't feel emotion. Or it's possible that you are a replicant, and you probably have dead eyes. Dead eyes is a giveaway. It's probably easier than the whole test I just did. Um, <laughs> So it's better to be human, um, even if that means you're a little inconsistent and crazy. Um, and you know, to conclude, um, we don't have unified interests. It depends a lot on context. You have to realize your audience will like diverse content, um, that, that sometimes people like to Google uh, some celebrity uh, gossip or something that they're not proud of looking at, but at other point times they're sharing, you know, join me in helping the people of Boston after the trage this tragedy, um, or sharing inspiring stories or things that, they, that they're interested in when everyone is looking. Um, that EQ matters more than IQ. Um, particularly in the tech industry, we start to think in terms of how, how to be smart. What's a smart social media strategy? What's the, what, how do we, how do we um, you, you know, use our, our superior intellects to, to figure out how to solve all these problems in the world? But a key part of being human, and, and perhaps an even more important part of being human, is, is having an emotional sense. And, and what you share has a lot to do with your identity you want to project in the world. It has a lot to do with... Um, with um, what, what you care about and what you think matters, what you think will delight your friends, what will make your friend laugh. Um, we all are literally crazy by the new definition of literally. Um, you know, you need to figure out how to make content for our OCD, narcissistic, and ADD selves. If you have a very simplified view of, the, of, 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 
of identity and you think that people are only interested in one sort of thing, you're missing a whole range of different uh, opportunities. And when you look at uh, the web services that have really thrived, uh, they tend to be um, platforms that have allowed people to express all different aspects of what it means to be human and that don't narrowly constrain people in one, in one area. And uh, you know, BuzzFeed is really one of the only content companies that takes that approach and makes content for all of these diverse networks where people can, can, can be themselves. Um, and even if, even if being yourself means um, conflicting impulses. Um, and then the cats on the web aren't about cats. Um, cats and cute animals are a way to connect with other people in your life. It's a way to show that you're, you're human. It's a way to have human emotions and uh, human um, feelings. And this is a selfie, uh, just to play on the uh, narcissistic personality. It is a, it's a snapshot selfie, so it's gonna disappear in a second. So just look quickly, and, and now it's gone. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm not sure who's up next. I do have, I, I did finish a little early. If anyone wants to, to, to do, uh, we could do like two questions, perhaps. Anyone have a question? Someone has one. This is also a social dynamic. It's a social dynamic of nobody asks a question, and then when one or two people ask a question, then there's too many questions, and then some people don't get to ask their question. <laughs> so so who, who wants to start? All right, go ahead. Um, I think the Yes, so we don't do slideshows because slideshows are really annoying. You have to like click and click and click to see anything. We do lists. Um, and a big, a big I, th I think the one, number one sort of recommendation for going viral is there's not a trick. When you look at like what the Washington Post did, for example, with their social reader, where they said, oh, we can hook into Read Edge on Facebook and we, we're gonna be in early. And now every time someone clicks on a Washington Post story, it, has, it asks them to install this app and then everything that that person reads gets shared and it's this perfect viral loop. And, and it, it worked, it grew like that, it was huge. But it was a trick and it, people didn't like it and people would see these stories in their newsfeed and they'd be like, click it and they'd be like, oh, I have to install something and it was really frustrating for people. So it rose and then it crashed. And so I think the, the main key you know, for, for going viral is don't overly fixate on, on a particular platform and say, I'm gonna hook into this API and that's how I'm gonna go, go viral. Think about um, people and how they behave. Think about psychology and social psychology and then make something that people are going to be like proud to share. So some of the things I showed in this talk, you know, have it tied to people's identity. You know, we did a we did a post on the challenges of being excessively tall. And every time I meet someone who's excessively tall, they're like, I saw that post. Someone sent that to me. Um, you know, hugging short people can be really awkward. For example. Um, or, or like signs that you've been raised by Asian immigrant parents, right? It's you know, a great collection that we did that everyone who has had that experience can relate to and will we'll pass, pass around. Um, making something that, you, that when you share it, you're proud to share it and it actually makes you look good. You know, people are searching for these, these you know, when you look at the, what people search for, it tends to be these things that nobody would really wanna share. It's what you're interested in when no one's looking. Um, and then also thinking about the context of where people are when they consume media. I mean, we saw, we saw um, uh, uh, the, the, this huge, you know, a decade ago or eight years ago, I saw this huge trend, which was all the traffic was coming when people were at work, which led to this idea of, oh, this is content for the board at work network. How do you make something where someone's at the office, they have a little time and they can make something to share. Now we're seeing that our video traffic is 50% mobile or more, and it's happening during primetime television. So people are actually watching primetime television and their video device at the same time. Um, we're seeing Pinterest traffic surge on weekends and evenings, you know, so, so you start to think, where is that person who's consuming content? What network are they using? What are the social relationships but, that, that they have with other people in that network? And then you can kind of back from those to think, oh, what would be something that would really delight that person, that would get them excited, that would want them to, that, that they would be proud to share with everyone, with, with everyone they know? So I think there's not a simple silver bullet. Um, but there's lots of things that can increase your chance of success, and, and they all, to me, seem to be very tied to, to uh, human psychology um, and, 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 and sort of understanding human behavior. All right, I think, I, I think that was the only question I could do, but thanks so much, and uh, um, someone else is coming up next. <laughs>